Welcome back. This is Jingo Nelly, and I'm going to be taking you through the part two of determining the net profit from the single and incomplete records using the income statement. So I'm going to require you to follow what I'm pointing at so that you can follow up very well since I'm having laid down information. Uh, first of all, we get to follow the five steps always when we are determining the net profit using the income statement. Uh, we prepare the statement of affairs to determine the opening capital. Always you must determine the opening capital. If it's not give, if you want to determine it, you can use uh, the statement of affairs to determine it. If it's given, well and good. Then we have in preparation of the cash book to determine the cash balance and bank balance. Always you open up the cash book if at all you're not given the cash balance and bank balance. Then we move on to the third step. Determine credit sales using the credit creditors control accounts as we are going to see later on then determine the credit purchases using the creditors control accounts as we are going to see later on then adjust or make adjustments for the expenses so moving on to the next uh, step one it's going to be determining the opening capital so I'm going to determine the opening capital using the what the op the beginning assets and uh, uh, beginning liabilities as at first of a particular year then they're saying here example two a trader had the following list of balances for assets and liabilities as at the beginning of the year determine determine the determine the value of the opening capital amounts are in ugx so with this uh these are the assets as at beginning and these are the liabilities as at beginning so the solution is going to be um, with my statement statement of affair as at first of january 2020 then i'm going to lay down i'm going to lay down my building equipment cash at hand and then it will equate to the total assets as listed below then equity i go to equity and liabilities it's like i'm extracting a balance sheet but in this time i i call it our statement of affairs as, as at first january 2020 then i'll begin with i'll begin with my capital but for my capital for my capital it is uh it's what i want to determine so i move on to liabilities and i'm having trade payables uh bills payable then the total liabilities so when i add this it gives me this total so Already, I already know that my total assets are this amount. So this amount is, has to be equal to this amount. So if this amount is equal to this, then the difference between the total uh, the total amount of equity and liability minus the total liabilities is going to give me uh, this figure that I've put in a rectangle. So this will be my what opening capital, and there I'll be good to go to move on to the next step. So, for the next step, it's going to be preparation. Uh, it's going to be preparation of the cash book. So, with the preparation of the cash book, I'm going, first of all, I'm going to extract the cash book to determine the cash balance or bank balance. Then after that, uh, I, all ca I can also extract this cash book uh, to, determine, uh, to determine the cash sales or cash purchases an illustration is as below if at all i'm having a heading uh, my cash book cash book then i say details cash bank this is the debit side and this will be my credit side so after that uh my balance assuming my balance brought forward is 40 this one is uh 50 000, and uh, this one uh and on the credit side because salaries i'm using uh my cash to pay the workers which is 90 and uh, if at all i'm having this and i want to balance off my what will be on the debit side as a maybe a balancing figure will be the cash sales and uh, what will be a balancing figure on the credit side will be my cash purchases if at all i'm having my balance carried down already being given when i don't need to find any other balancing figure because i, I know when i'm me, when i'm having a figure that is balance that is missing it will be my balance carried down but in a situation where by having the balance carried down already in the cash and bank column 
That means the other missing balancing figures on the debit side, it will be the cash purchases, and on the credit side, it will be the what? The cash. Sorry, on, on, on the debit side, it will be the cash sales, and on the credit side, the missing balancing, figure, missing balancing figure will be the cash purchases. Then moving on, the cash and bank balance go to the what to the balance sheet. Now for these two, after you determining this balance here and this balance here, they'll go to the balance sheet. Then from there, uh, we know sales is equal to cash sales plus uh, plus credit sales, and this is to be taken to the income statement. That is the profit and loss. And again, we know that purchases is equal to cash purchases plus credit purchases, which will go to the income statement. So for this, you have used it to determine the cash sales, and you also used it to determine the cash purchases. Now, determining these two, the credit sales and the credit purchases using the creditor's control account. So that will lead us to go to step three. So for step three, for step three, it's going to be uh, determine uh, determine credit sales using the debtor's control account. Now, with debtor's control account, what I want you to know is that you have to look at it in the aspect that somebody here, you're demanding somebody. And if you're demanding somebody, what is going to increase that debt or decrease it? So, for things that... Uh, increase the debt because we know that the debtors are assets for so for things that increase a debt so from alice alice debit and this is going to be credit so an asset is going to increase by debiting and it's going to reduce by crediting so if at all a data is an asset and uh, what is happening if at all this data, uh, if at all I make, if, if at all the, the data returns the sales, hmm? if at all there are sales returns by the data, that means it's going to be reducing my asset because he has returned and uh, it's going to be reducing on the debt that I'm demanding him. That's why I'm going to credit, which is going to be a minus. So once again, this data pays cash cash received from the debtors that means it's reducing the debt that i'm demanding him that means i'm going to minus i'm minusing on the credit side because this is an asset and it reduces by crediting then if i told i give him a discount if i told i give him a discount that means it's going to reduce on the amount i'm demanding him that means i'm going to come again and i credit so what happens when he takes goods again on credit that means it's going to increase on the debt that i'm demanding him that's why i'm going to credit I'm, I'm going to debit the credit sales because he has taken more goods on credit that means i'm demanding him so the debt is increasing so that will lead me to go to uh, to step four but if at all i balance up this side and this side so the missing balancing figure if uh, on the debit side it's what i will call my watch credit sales so if i'm to move to if i'm to move to 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 step for determine credit purchases using the credit the, the creditors control accounts uh same here here it is like they're demanding you somebody is demanding you and creditors from alice uh creditors it's like a liability so this is going to be a liability. So a liability increases on the debit on the credit side and it decreases on the uh, on the debit side. Increases on the credit side, decreases on the debit side. So meaning that if somebody is demanding you, what happens when you pay this person? When you pay this person, that means you're reducing on the debt that is demanding you, which is a minus. So once you're reducing on the debt they're demanding you, it's going to reduce a liability. And the liability reduces on the debit side and what happens when you return goods to this person when you return goods to this person that means you're reducing on the debt this person is demanding you because you have returned him the goods he sold to you so those are the returns outwards then we're having discount received if this creditor person who's demanding gives you a discount that means reducing on the amount that is what demanding you but what happens when you get you take 
more credit purchases that means you're going to increase on the date that is that he is demanding you and the factory balance up to this side and uh, this side you find out that this the balancing figure will be your credit purchases and that's how you determine the credit and uh, the credit purchases and credit sales that means you can now work out for this so you have determined this then you have worked out this and this that means you can find your sales and purchases which you will take to the income statement so after that uh we shall go uh this is just a uh, more of what i was saying you have determined your cash sales your cash purchases and even your credit sales and even your credit purchases and you have got them from the data's control account and you have got them from the uh, creditors control account so taking us to the next which is going to be now with this uh, with this uh, it is determining or when in case you're being given a gross profit a uh, gross profit margin and markup so with this I think uh, let's continue with this in our next video thank you for watching uh make sure you subscribe like and comment and uh, don't forget to come back for the next video